Hey guys, welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends video. So we've got the Void Rush coming tomorrow, um, and we're going to be doubling the chance of opening Legendary and Epic Champions from Void Shards. This is my favourite event because I've got tons of the other guys, but I'm missing quite a few of the Void Champions, so always excited when this comes around. And to be honest, this is probably one of the better ones, if not the best one we've had for a while, because they're tying in a 10 times event with the double rates. Now, I think a few other people have posted videos about this. I think they've maybe got it, got it wrong, because the way I'm reading this is from 8 a.m. UTC Thursday until the, January the 4th, they're doubling the rates, but then also from 8 a.m. Thursday to Saturday, January the 2nd, they are giving you the 10 times for Tormund as well. Um, so the way I'm reading that is you're gonna get double time, double rates, sorry, and you're gonna get 10 times at the same point, so is the best possible chance of getting Tormund we've ever had, apart from when he was obviously a fusion. Um, I missed that fusion, unfortunately, so I'm definitely going to be shooting for him. I play Arena a lot, so he's a... Uh, although I, <laughs> I hate facing him, he's a pretty useful champion, and he's useful in PvE as well, so I'm definitely one to get myself a Tormund. But yeah, I'm definitely, definitely going to pull all my shards. So I've not got loads. I think I've got maybe 60-odd or something, which I suppose for, for Void is quite a lot. I'd, I'd like to maybe get one or two packs, maybe get to about 80 to 100 and then a beast it tomorrow but the aim of this video is definitely going to be the top five voids that you can pull right now in my opinion this is just my opinion um, but i think most people would agree um these are the top five just quickly before i go into the top five i'm just going to quickly point out something i've noticed that i don't think playroom can actually count because it says here but that's not all for just one day now for one day that's 24 hours in my opinion from 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. Saturday. Surely that's Thursday, Friday, that's two days. But anyways, maybe they can't count. Just a little thing I've noticed, this is my OCD kicking in here, but uh, yeah, so two days you're gonna have to summon Tormund, which is pretty cool. So hopefully they bring out a few decent packs in that time to make it worth it. So anyway guys, let's go ahead with the top five. Coming in at number five, it's Warlord. Uh, this is also a wish list for me. I don't have Warlord, but he's nuts. Um, he's a legendary support champion from the Orcs. And let's just quickly go through his skills. I'm going to briefly explain their skills and explain why they're so good. So on his A1, he's got 25% chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. So straight away, this guy's a nuts in clan boss. He's fantastic in arena. He's really good everywhere. Yeah, incidentally, this list isn't specifically for like one type of the game. This is more for an all-rounder. Because um, if I was to do, like say, top five void for arena, you're going to be like Hegemon and all that kind of stuff in there. Um, but yeah, yeah, Warlords, uh, he's nuts everywhere in the game. So this is the top five specifically for like all-rounders, um, just good everywhere in the game. So his A2 puts a block debuffs up for one turn on all allies, um, then places a shield buff on all allies for 30% of the champion's max HP uh, for two turns and heals him by 25. This is a lot for one skill. This is definitely one of his standout skills. The block debuffs is nuts and you get a heal and a shield off him. And his damage is based on attack, but you're gonna build him with big HP because, well, he's got 22k base HP, which is massive. Um, his A3 here, this is uh, pretty nuts actually. It attacks all enemies, has a 70% chance, which is actually 100 when booked, to put each target's skills on cooldown and a 30% chance to fully deplete each target's turn meter. So this this is the craziest skill he's got. Um, this is just nuts. If you can build him with a decent amount of accuracy, you're going to put all their target skills on cooldown, which is his game over in Arena, effectively. This is why he's so good in Arena. And the fact that he can deplete their turn meter just means they get suddenly another go. So this is probably his best, if not definitely his best ability. Um, super strong. He's also got a resist in all battles by 80, which was the best for a long time. Um, Lydia's came in and pretty much destroyed that and Siffy. But yeah, he's, he's very, very strong. Coming in at number four, we have the famous Arbiter. Um, no list would be complete without Arbiter. She is definitely one of the most used champions in the game still. And everyone can get her, which is pretty cool if you can complete the missions. Um, everyone should know what she does, so I'll just quickly go through. She's the best speed aura in the game apart from, what's his face? The demon guy. I always forget his name. Lord Shazar, I think. And um, that's for Arena. He does 32%, but she's the most used one. Um, 
for her 30% speed increase. I think Prince Kaimar does the same as well, actually. Um, but her kit, she's just got everything in the kit. She's got a double hit in A1, which is a decent chance of putting Weaken on. Her A2 is actually super useful. I use it to take off um, things like Unkillable off the um, Skull Crowns and things like that. You know, you can take off any block damage buffs with this. It's really useful, actually. Um, now, her A3, this is our standout ability, fills the turn meters of all allies by 30% and an increased attack and heals them as well. You always forget about that heal, it never really comes into play because you normally just use this off the bat to take a turn before everyone else. Um, and she's also got a fantastic revive to revive everybody and fills her turn meters and grants an extra turn if you revive any of them, which is crazy. Uh, five turn cooldown, but she's normally so fast this comes around super quick. Um, I know I'm running mine at about 370 speed for Arena, so most people generally in Arena have ha got a pretty high speed. So number three is Siffy. This is probably a shock to people because a lot of people would have her at number one. A lot of people did for a while. Um, she is incredible, don't get me wrong, but uh, I just think there's two people that are a little bit higher on the list to her, but not by much. Um, she's a legendary support, Undead Hordes. Incidentally, Undead Hordes have got two of the top ten here, and uh, they're they're both they're really really boasting a lot of good champs right now. So need to share the love between the other factions, I believe. Um, but yeah, she's got a crazy crazy kit. Her A one puts people to sleep, which is really really annoying in arena. Um, also heal its allies as well. It's it's crazy. Um, her A two just does so much stuff. It's got block debuffs, two turns, which is more than warlords. Fills the turn meter as well, which is like a bit of arbiters. Places increased defense and increased speed for two turns. Um, it's just it's too much for one skill effectively and the fact it's a f well four turn cooldown seems fair if it was three it would be just two, nut two nuts um, then she's got a good revive it's a single target revive so it's not quite as good as Arbiter's but it's got um, the increased attack and crit rate does come in useful but most of the time it's, it's kind of you're just using it really for the full turn meter thing the, the full turn meter makes it really really strong and a four turn cooldown um, now this passive is really what's crazy about her I think. It heals each ally by 10% of their max HP at the start of each turn and a 40% chance of moving Freeze and Fear from each ally and obviously if you've got Rotos just, he just removes everything um, from himself at the start of each turn if he's in the same team which is really really cool. Good increase ally resist again same as Warlord. Her A1 actually I should probably say that's probably one of her standout abilities really in arena has been for a long time. Um, it got nerfed a tiny little bit I think in the last patch but not too bad. Um, but I mean it's still a 100% chance. Um, it's the, Oh no it didn't get nerfed, it was, someone else said it was going to get nerfed, that's right. It was saying this debuff cannot be resisted, that's really what makes it so crazy. Um, yeah yeah I mean I wish, I wish it wasn't, I wish it had to rely on accuracy that would make it a little bit fairer. But uh, this is probably what makes her so crazy. He can just put everyone to sleep with their A1s. Um, yeah, super strong champion. And look at that base speed, 114. I think it's maybe the highest in the game. Um, I can't remember. I think there's maybe one other that's just up there. But uh, crazy HP, good, um, good defense, great speed. Yeah, super strong. Coming in at number two, it's got to be my man Krisk. Um, one of the first champions I actually pulled. Um, basically sailed me through the entire game super easily. He's unbelievably good. He's definitely not underrated, but I feel a lot of people maybe would have Siffy above this guy, but I just feel she is extremely good, but she's maybe not quite as good in some areas of the game, whereas this guy can pretty much slot into any single team anywhere and do well. Um, he's in probably, I think he's in the best clan boss team in the world right now, Scratch AK-47, it's about 151 million. And this guy's pretty much the backbone of the team, he says. Um, he's in like all the top Platinum Arena teams. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. He's uh, viable in all the dungeons. Really, really strong in all of them. Um, he's just, yeah, he's just amazing everywhere. So this is why I've got him in at number two. So let's go with his passive first, because that kind of explains really why he's so good. So at the start of each round, which um, is super important for Clan Boss, it's not too much use for the shield at the start of each round so that's only going to put it up at the start of the clan boss fight then the rest of the fight it's not going to come around and it's on allies for two turns um, but this also makes him super strong for things like the doom tower scarab boss because at the start of the round you'll put a shield up and then you could use your other shield champion to keep the shields up the rest of the turn 50% of the champion's max HP he's got decent HP insane defense 1.5k 
um, and a 75 100% when booked to of placing 60% decreased defense and decreased attack on the a debuff on the attacker for one turn when hit so that the really good thing about this is it doesn't get affected by the start of each round so like every time he gets attacked it's got a 100% chance if he's got the accuracy of putting decreased attack and defense on whoever attacked him which makes him so so strong so it's basically like adding in a pseudo madame effectively when anyone attacks him with AoE included so it's, it's super strong so his A1 he's got AoEs on both his abilities which is another really good thing about him um, could be using the stun set that way um, his A1 attacks all enemies and he's got a decent chance of putting decreased speed down 50% when booked um, his A2 really shines for me though he's got the ally protection with an AoE and two continuous heal buffs on this champion but it also increases the duration of all buffs by one turn which is quite a rare ability actually so this increases things like Valk's counter attack um, debuff blocks things like that really strong abilities so you can use this guy to make things super useful for yourself and then his A3 puts a provoke on all enemies for one turn which is strong anywhere in the game and also big increased defense and speed on all allies um, oh sorry no the increased defense is only on him but increased speed on all allies so cycles him around that's why he's so good in the clan boss team because he's, he's, he's making everyone really really strong but he's also putting on that increased speed I think the only thing that I suppose maybe lets him down is he's only 94 speed but if he was any higher than that this guy would be so overpowered it would be ridiculous so I think that kind of makes him quite fair and he doesn't look like the fastest champion in the world let's be honest he's a big fat kind of turtle thing he's, he's pretty cool though so it makes sense so number one this might be a surprise to a lot of people um, or maybe not a lot of people are picking him already um, it's Necrit the Great so this is a guy I've played very little against I don't own so this is pure theory crafting but I think this guy might have the best kit in the game um, it's definitely the most interesting and fun kit in the game for me just now or definitely my most sought after champ super cool looking as well but I just see this guy like really being useful every single place of the game um, bar none so let's just go through his passive first that's probably the easiest way to explain him then I'll go through his kit because it is a little bit more complex than most um, he's got resistant all battles by 60 yeah, it's not as good as Lydia's and stuff so incidentally Lydia's not on this list because you can't get her from void shards she would be in my opinion on this list definitely um, that is the reason she's not in there um, she is just the faction worst champ so this is purely for voids that you can get from shards for this pool this weekend so his first passive here whenever an ally is attacked under an ally protection buff placed by this champion he places a shield equal to 30% of this champion's max HP and his HP is huge um, for two turns occurs only if they don't have a shield on already so whenever anyone's attacked if they don't have a shield on they just plop a massive shield on um, and if the shield is placed which it will be he's, his legion of the dam skill is uh, decreased by two turns which is crazy we'll go into that in a second and his other one here at the start of every round he basically chooses the the champion with the lowest max HP so you can configure this you know you can make any champion have whatever HP they want and puts a, a big strength in debuff for three turns which is really rare actually there's a, Lydia's got it now there's a few champs with it but strength in is a really strong ability and not many champions have it block debuffs as well for three turns which is crazy and a 50% ally protection for six turns so that's not coming off I mean six turns in arena and the game's over and um, the ally protection can't be removed either which um, is super strong probably the reason why this kit is so good because folk like madame or chris can't just strip it away um, they can't take debuffs anyway so it has to be someone like madame or chris that would strip the strengthen and the, the block debuffs and the fact that they can't get to the ally protection makes this really strong because at first when i read this i thought oh god madame's just going to strip all that it's no use but then seeing this bit at the end that really makes this kit super super good uh, so let's go through his actual kit now so he's got an A1 which is uh, actually much stronger than it looks it's only I think it's a 50% no 30% when booked chance of placing decreased attack for one turn but the fact that it can't be resisted makes him unbelievably good because you don't have to build any accuracy in this champion whatsoever um, everything is buffs that he's putting on your team there's no debuffs apart from this so straight away super well um, played playroom that's a really good good move and it makes him really viable for a clan boss his A2, this is where it gets interesting. So he teams up with allies to attack one enemy 
All allies under ally protection buffs placed by this champion will join the attack. Allies joining the attack will... So it's, it's just like another team attack sort of thing. Um, grants an extra turn if this attack does not kill the target. So instantly clan boss, that's, that's just crazy, you know. I can see, especially on a four turn cooldown, and the fact that this is the Legion of the Damned. When they're placing shields, the Legion of the Damned skills goes down by two turns. So I can already just see some crazy builds where... You're doing a ton of extra attacks, you know, like in your proc and war masters left, right, and center, because you've got all your team under ally protection buffs, and yes, this this is going to be crazy. This is what makes it really interesting for clan boss, but also for arena. I mean, this guy's going to be a nightmare in arena if you build a really decent. I think he's actually going to bring back a meta of more defensive teams, because I just can't see too many champions being able to get through and deal damage once you add in all these strength and things and stuff, and maybe like a Lydia team with the the 100 base um, resist on your whole team with this guy, super high resist, might be super strong. Um, and then just to top it off, he's got an A3 that places everything he places on his passive onto anyone you want. So he's got the block debuffs, 50% ally protection and 25% strength in, um, onto any single champion you want on a 3 turn cooldown. And also the fact that the ally protection is coming on can't be removed again, it's the same situation. So you can put so many ally protections on your champions and then use this thing and then suddenly everyone's going to be hitting with their A1. Incidentally, if you use him with Krisk, which is the previous champion on this list, he's going to be increasing the duration of all buffs. So him and Krisk together, in my opinion, are going to be so nuts. They're both defensive as well, which makes them really tough together. And the fact that Chris has the ally protection on him as well, on his A3, which means you'll put it on the whole team right away and straight away you'll be able to Oh no, actually I have read that wrong, sorry. All allies under ally protection buffs placed by this champion will join the attack. So that won't work, but still Krisk is going to be a really viable option because his A1 is really, really good to hit on a team attack just to put the decreased speed down and everything. Yeah, maybe a bit of a shock to some guys, but I believe this guy is the best void in the game at the moment. Maybe bar Lydia, I think Lydia's pretty nuts as well, but you can't get Lydia from shards. So yeah, that's why he's in here. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell button for notifications and leave a comment please and have a great day. Peace.